Hey guys, welcome back to RWM Finance. Today I wanted to talk with y'all about the types of ETFs that you can buy. I've mentioned in past videos that ETFs are good investments. I even have a video over what an ETF is. So an ETF is an exchange traded fund. They are types of securities that involve a collection of securities, which often track an underlying index. However, they can invest in any number of industry sectors and they can use various strategies. ETFs are similar to mutual funds. However, ETFs are traded throughout the day, just like stocks are. Since I have mentioned that ETFs are good investments and I have actually made a video over what they are, I figured I should tell y'all about the different types of ETFs that you could invest in. First, if you haven't subscribed, please scroll down and click that subscribe button for me and we'll get to those different types of ETFs. The first type of exchange traded fund that we have is an index ETF. These ETFs track a benchmark index like the S&P 500. They are like index mutual funds, but whereas mutual funds can be redeemed at just one price throughout the day, index ETFs can be bought and sold throughout the day on major stock exchanges, just as an ordinary stock would. An index ETF is designed specifically to replicate a benchmark index like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the NASDAQ 100, and like I already said, the S&P 500. Index ETFs are becoming increasingly popular as they provide investors with a a low cost access to diversified passive index strategies. Our next type of ETF is an actively managed ETF. This is a portfolio chosen by a fund manager to try to beat the market. This produces investment returns that do not perfectly mirror the underlying index. Generally, actively managed ETFs do not adhere to any passive income strategy. They may have a loose benchmark index, but managers of the fund may stray from the index as they see fit. Many actively managed ETFs have higher expense ratios than a traditional index ETF. This puts pressure on the managers to consistently try and outperform the market. I have to say that these are not my favorite type of ETF due to the expense ratios and the odds of a so-called financial professional trying to beat the market. Just some numbers for y'all so you can judge whether or not you should invest in an actively managed ETF or an indexed ETF. The S&P 500 index fund has historically beaten roughly 80% of all mutual funds, but on an after-tax basis, that number is closer to 85 to 90% of all mutual funds. So the odds of those financial pros beating the market is pretty low. So I would stay away from actively managed ETFs, but hey, that is just me. So what is our next ETF? Our next ETF is a commodity ETF. This type of ETF holds physical commodities such as gold, silver, or oil, or any other physical commodity. Commodity ETFs focus on either a single commodity or on investments in futures contracts. An investor that purchases this type of ETF does not usually own a physical asset, but instead a contract which are backed by the physical assets themselves. These are popular because they offer investors exposure to commodities without having to learn how to purchase futures or other types of derivative products. So our next type of ETF is an inverse ETF. Inverse ETFs usually hold derivatives to make money when the index declines. Investing in inverse ETFs is similar to holding various short positions, which involve borrowing securities and selling them with the hope of repurchasing them at a lower price. Inverse ETFs allow investors to make money when the market or the underlying index that it is following starts to decline, all without having to sell anything short. But higher fees tend to correspond with inverse ETFs compared to traditional ETFs. Remember, the intelligent investor keeps his or her expenses low because fees can wear away your profits like the swipe of sandpaper. Our next exchange traded fund is an international ETF. These types of ETFs hold foreign-based securities. They can hold global, regional, or specific country securities. This type of ETF may track global markets or track a country-specific benchmark index. Within the actual international ETF section, there are also emerging markets, 
or frontier market ETFs. These involve investing in less developed country stocks or bonds. Investors can use these ETFs to diversify geographic and political risk associated with their portfolios. So if you watched my video over what is a defensive investor and made it to the end of the video where I talked about an investment strategy for a defensive investor, you know that one of the only three investments that you need to make is in an ETF or an index fund that holds foreign based stocks. I find this to be a good strategy because say that America's economy is tanking and it's just not looking good right now, but there could be other economies in other countries that are booming. So you never know what's going on around the world. And if your investments are just based out of the United States, you're only going to hit what the U.S. economy is doing. So it's good to have investments outside of the U.S. That way, you know, you're not strictly putting all your eggs in U.S. stocks or putting all your eggs in a U.S. stock market basket. This is just another way of diversification, which is just a risk management technique. So the last type of ETF that I have for y'all is a sector ETF. This type of ETF holds industry-specific securities and stocks rather than the broad market. Sector ETFs are available for each GICS sector, as well as several ad, HOC, and unique sectors that may not be a part of the 11 GICS sectors. These ETFs can be used to invest in an entire industry without having to piece together the individual stocks of that individual sector. For instance, a sector ETF may track the benchmark index of energy stocks, or maybe technology stocks, or even maybe airline stocks. I find that ETFs are good investments because selecting individual stocks can sometimes be pretty risky. ETFs hold many securities and stocks, which can have some stocks doing poorly while some stocks are doing well. This can help an investor not experience such a significant loss. Like I've said before, this is just information for y'all. I am not trying to push y'all to purchase the ETF types that I've presented y'all today. I'm just trying to help y'all be educated on the topic of these different types of ETFs. So those are the types of ETFs that you can buy. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, scroll down, give it a like, and subscribe to the channel below. Also, if you have any questions, please leave those down in the comment section and I will personally try and respond to each and every one of them. Follow us on Instagram at RWM Finance. Also, remember to check out the list of books in the description bar below. There are some really good ones in there that have personally helped me out a lot. Another thing to remember is I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so make sure to tune in for the next one. As always, thank y'all for watching, and I will see y'all in the next video.